It's 40 years today since the Tasman Bridge collapsed and the ship which struck it sank to the bottom of the Derwent. A commemorative ceremony is being held on the bridge tonight to mark the disaster. Reporter Tyson Shine joins us now from Hobart's eastern shore. Tyson, what's planned? Well, Hobart's Lord Mayor Sue Hickey will meet with Clarence Mayor Doug Chipman in the centre of the bridge tonight where they'll unveil a commemorative plaque. And at 9.27, which is the precise time the Lake Illawarra struck the Tasman Bridge, bringing down a 127 metre section of it, that's when the lights that normally run along the bottom of the bridge will be dimmed and there will be a minute silence then. The bridge will of course be closed for this event, much like what happens at the moment when a large boat is going underneath and it's guided by one of those smaller pilot vessels. And there is one man who's still haunted by the events that happened 40 years ago. He would have been a pilot on the night for the Lake Illawarra if it had put in a request. He spoke with Lucy Shannon who filed this report. As the Lake Illawarra slammed into the Tasman Bridge 40 years ago, maritime pilot Digby Longhurst was asleep in bed. His job was to board ships and guide them into port. That night, the captain of the ill-fated carrier had been granted an exemption from having a pilot. The more ports he had an exemption for and his seniority grew, the chances of him being promoted to master were stronger in those days. The, the reason that you have an exemption in the first place is for the ship owner to be able to save money. Under the rules of the day, it was granted because the captain had navigated the port in the previous two years. Ever since, Digby Longhurst has been haunted by whether history would have been different if he was on board. More than likely, I think, the incident would not have occurred. An inquiry found the captain had been off course due to river currents and inattention. By the time they realised that they were horribly off course, it was horribly too late. The Clarence City Council is holding an exhibition to mark the anniversary. Well, Alan, tell us what we're looking at here, the off-course alarm from the Lake Illawarra. OK, in, in theory, what it should do is sound an alarm, and it's got a little light here that lights up, which tells you if you're going seriously off-course uh, from your pathway under the bridge. So the big question is, uh, did it not sound or did it malfunction? And, of course, we don't know the answer to that. The ship sank and became a part of the bridge's reconstruction. You can see that it was the, the most sensible solution uh, in the end was simply to leave the, the ship on the riverbed and to build around it. The wreck has been investigated by Navy divers and was last year mapped by the CSIRO. It's monitored closely. The concern is that it still has um, about 10,000 tonnes of zinc concentrate in its hold. The cargo is still there intact. The disaster led to major changes for ships passing under the bridge. The ships only pass under the, the bridge during designated times. Uh, all traffic across the bridge is, is stopped while uh, vessels are passing under and all vessels are now piloted and, and the larger vessels all have tugs escorting them. The bridge itself is said to be in middle age with an expected lifespan of about a century. Lucy Shannon, ABC News. Tyson, has the anniversary of the disaster been marked previously? Well, Peter, there was a small service when the bridge reopened uh, two and a half years after it was uh, hit in, in 1977. Then, in, uh, for the 25th anniversary, there was a much larger uh, commemorative service. Then Premier Jim Bacon acknowledged during that service that there would be many people in the community who were still feeling the effects uh, from the memories of that night. And this is really the third and, and most recent major uh, commemorative service that has happened. There have been a number of plaques and uh, also a number of skulls which have been opened, but tonight is, is the third, third event that's happened to commemorate that, uh, that event 40 years ago. Just how important is the Tasman Bridge to modern day Hobart? Well, it is a main arterial road in Hobart, of course, one of three ways that you can get from the east to the west shore of the River Derwent. Uh, when the bridge collapsed, Peter, there were about 23,000 people who used to use a ferry service to go each day to and from the eastern shore to the western shore for work. Nowadays, however, that number has grown exponentially. The latest figures we've got from the State Growth Department suggest that as many as 66,000 cars each day travel across the bridge. Tyson Shine reporting and a reminder that the Tasman Bridge will be closed for those commemorations from 9.15 to 9.35 tonight. A man from Northern Ireland accused of throwing a single punch that landed his younger brother.